Hey kids. Uh, nope, no booze today. It's only a uh, quarter to three. I'd like to remain semi-functional today. Anyway, today's video is brought to you by the fact that I'm terrible with money. <laughs> Never done one of these. I got nothing better to do today. It's uh, not a bad day here in the dungeon. And I figured, well, I'd kind of intended to uh, spend this afternoon getting mad about how the way Marvel treats Alpha Flight, but I stuff came in. Uh, wasn't supposed to get here till tomorrow, and uh, I'd like to go through it now. So what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you guys a little story about a much younger dub. Back in 94, he watched me and a handful of other people in the Star Trek club in my little town that dreams of being podunk someday. Uh, have them fleet captain. I like this guy. I like him a lot. <laughs> a lot of your choices of what's good in here are going to be different from mine. I don't play a lot of competitive. We'll get to that. So way, way back then. Me and a bunch of other people watching, uh, oh, what do I get, what do I get? Shaper's Sanctuary. Oh. Not bad. I like it. We watched Old Growth Dryads. Not quite sold on that one, personally. We're watching the last episode of Star Trek Next Generation, so 1994, back when dinosaurs roamed the Earth and the Internet wasn't really a thing. And a couple of the guys break out this weird game called Magic the Gathering. Uh, I played a lot of D&D, so the fantasy elements really spoke to me. Uh, and they, they played it, it looked fun. So, a little later that year, went to, uh, I messed up my sorting. Probably went to a store that actually sold this stuff. Now, as I said, my town dreamed of being podunk at the time. Which meant there was nowhere that sold this stuff. So all the way to the city, three hours away, to buy magic for the first time. That uh, was a ugh, blasting cannons. Uh, not a fan. You get there, they've got a box of unlimited starters. And a box of revised starters. Like an idiot, I asked the guy which one of these is better. Because I had no idea what the game was. I got all the cards I had seen were the ones being played. He's like, well, the revised stuff is new. So me and my having just, you know, still doing a hockey card hobby and comic books, new are obviously better, right? Yeah. So that's the first regret. Actually, the second regret. The first regret would be actually getting into this hobby in the first place. <laughs> Blood Craze Paladin. Oh, this is the kind of Cabal Ghoul. I like him. Uh, I think it gives me three with the ones I got from the pre release. Yep. Eight bucks a pop. I bought one revised starter. One. Had enough money to buy the whole box of unlimited starters. Didn't do it. <sighs> well, you can go back in time, right? So, finally learned how to play. Uh, the only cards I remember getting is this Captivating Crew. I'll tell you, okay. Just let you steal things. I kind of like him. I can use him. The only cards I remember getting were uh, the Pearl Unicorn. It's a 1 white and 2, vanilla 2 2. A Celestial Prism, which you paid, what was it? 3 tap and get one of any color. Because this was way back. <laughs> this is way, way back. And a Brass Man. And to a couple of the people that actually know me, uh, you'll know there's some significance 
to that brass man. Verdant Sun's avatar. Ooh, that's cool. Gain life equal to the power creature's toughness. Yes, I like that. That's going to be... Look at the deck he's going to like to be in. And at the time, you bought a starter deck. You got 20 land. You didn't get... Was it 25 now? You got 20. And not in any bloody order. I got three forests. Okay? Three. Couldn't play any of my green. I got four swamps. Couldn't play any of those either. I had enough planes to make a stab at building a deck. And then I traded for some. Because back then, you got... those. That's how you got... You got you got a land in, possibly a land in the uncommon slot. 25 and a starter. Starter's is kind of always a better deal. Uh, is my foil supposed to show up before my rare? Foil screen. I, okay, I kind of like it too. Oh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, another cannon. I want the ones that flip over, but not that guy. <laughs> yeah, so... That little brass man became the only card I could play in every deck I built for quite a while. <laughs> I know there's another really big story behind that guy that maybe I'll tell you someday. So, go along about maybe not even a year later, a few months later. We go back to the city, stop at a, a game store, and sitting there for ten, the monumental price of ten bucks. Ten. Ten. Huge dollars. A Vox Pearl. I thought, why would you buy this? It's a land. People will shatter it. Didn't buy it. Big irony, it's the only one I don't have yet. I managed to trade for all four others. Don't have a, mon a pearl yet. That's... Oh, I got the fork one. Cool. Uh, yeah. Spells and instant sorceries cost one less to cast. Uh, when you cast an instant or sorcery, put a charge counter on it. If you got four or more, flip it, and it turns into land that makes one of any color that forks your spell. I want him. Actually, I want 30 of this. Not really sure I'm going to get that. It's worth a try. <laughs> nope. Didn't do it. Hashtag regret. So, thus began my wonderful hobby of something that costs a buttload of money and fulfills my need to be uh, second foil rare. Arcane adaptation. Creatures you control are the same or chosen creature type. So it's... um. What's the one? I know Conspiracy is one from Mask Block. It costs two black and three. And there's one from... I want to say New Phyrexia does kind of the same thing. Creature spells you... Oh, you control. And creature cards you own that aren't in play. So everything. All, every, I'll decide that all of my creatures are going to be... I don't know. Pick a creature type. <laughs> it's not a joke for that. Tashana, Voice of Thunder. Oh, what's this another one? Oh, she's got seven, though. Yeah, a whole lot of cards, which would be a great... Be a not bad commander. That whole seven mana cost. That's eerie. Nope, that was the beginning of... Beginning of the end for old Dub's money. Spent a lot of time. A lot of cash. Fleet Swallow or Attacks per Target Player. Oh, this is the... What's Noof called this one? The Traumatized Fish. I wonder if you got one. I don't tell him I got one. Hey, look, Noof, I got a Traumatized, traumatized Fish. Uh, the first event I went to was for Ice Age. Uh, and that was a weird one. It was... Oh, it fell flagship. I got a promo one of these at the pre-release event. Yeah, that should tell you how the rest of that event went. I came in 11th. 
bad, not good. I went out to my pool, and I was like, this was actually one of the better things in it. A fellow flagship, yeah. Just kind of, nope, that's it, it's over. Emperor's Vanguard deals combat damage to a player and explorers. That's cool. I can I can work with that. First event was Ice Age. Uh, it's a weird time. Deflection and Orcish Squatters were the big money cards in that set. And I'm pretty sure you can dig Orcish Squatters out of the junk bin at this point. I went in with no real idea what I was doing, and accordingly got stomped. Rather harshly. It's a learning experience. Cali Honor Guard. Creatures entering the battlefield. That's a good one. That's a neat one. I'm probably, probably going to trade that. I do a lot of... Well, my luck in competitive should tell you. <laughs> but from that, you should glean that I pref much vastly prefer to play uh, Bishop of Rebirth. Ugh. Much bigger fan of casual. Uh, at that event, I got my first DCI number, which I promptly lost. Got issued my second a little while later. Uh... <laughs> and because I, you won't believe me unless I show you. Let's rip this out of the wallet. Where are we here? Here we are. I put my name over, well, you probably can't even read that, but from back here, count the numbers on that guy. Seven, and that's my second one. <laughs> uh, it's, from, it's from 96. So I lost my first one. Yeah. Didn't we're that long. It's never any, really any good competitive. Uh, the problem I have with the competitive is that people get really serious and it stops becoming a game. And if I'm playing, this is a game. I'm playing it for fun. And if I'm not having fun, I'm playing stuff like Drowned Catacomb, which I've got a million of. Pillar of Origins, which is. There's a battlefield, choose a creature type. Add one mana. Cast a creature spell. It's kind of like the, um, the Ancient Ziggurat. Molara. Kind of neat, kind of not. Kind of kind of not, really. Unless they build a really heavy creature-based commander deck or something. No, competitive. Just very, very little luck. I played a, a Sly deck. Remember them from way, way back? Ooh, a Towsing Dagger. Choosing the man of the, the land that makes one of any color. Hoot, I want him. So Sly is, uh, those of you now know what the mana curve is, right? You have your one casting out spells, your two, your three, with that. So Sly was, uh, 12, 12 or 16 one casting cost? I think it was 12. Eight twos, some threes, and you topped out at four. Uh, you deck land a little lean on land because... You didn't need like as long as you could hit your your fourth land drop, your four turn four turn five, you were doing fairly good. You were gonna whoop the snot out of that goldfish. Mavern fiend dusk apostle. When you attack with a non-token vampire, you're getting a vampire token. That's okay. He'll look good in a deck full of other vampires. So I went in. But was it? 15 mountains, two mistress factories, with the idea that uh, if I, you know, they make mana, turn into a creature. You wonder how that, that backfired on me? First game. This is way, way before. When your mulligan was no land. But if you had one, you're stuck with it. Guess what my one land was? Now his skin shifter becomes a copy of a target non-legendary boy. One of those frickin' factories. The only land I drew. Got squashed. Because you only draw, I drew a colorless land in a deck full of stuff that costs colored toast. 
Nope, that's okay. My luck will turn in the second one. Second one! Ah, again! Got friggin' smashed. Absolutely crushed. Lost most of my stomach for competitive. Boneyard Parley. Still cost commander card. Cost seven. Play it in casual. And then it was very few and far between that I really had any luck. Ooh, a Ruin Raider. Any luck at all in, uh, in competitive. I don't play a lot competitive. We've got a Foil Mountain and a regular Mountain. Don't play a lot of competitive. Uh, don't have a store in town. Like to get to get this. It's a half hour down the road. The next store that, that sells it is 45 minutes down the road in the other direction. Just don't have a place to do that kind of stuff. Sunbirds Invocation. Six. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X card to your library where X is the mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost. X so X is paying a mana cost. Ah, that's weird. That's really weird. Think about that one. Uh, my only other real successes. So, and this is all local stuff too. I've never, I've never even tried to play in a, any kind of qualifiers. I, I know exactly what my luck is like. Ashes of the Abhorrent. That's neat, but I, I play stuff that, stuff in my graveyard. Uh, I built one deck just to prove how mad I was at constructed formats. Uh, red, black. Well, a bunch of burn, a couple things with shadow. This was it was after time spiral block because of the cards in it, but don't ask me how far off. Somewhere around there. Uh, it mostly amounted to a lot of burn, and then extirpate to get rid of people's stuff that uh, would come back to haunt me. I'm trying. Uh, you, you failed me miserably in the pre-release, Mr. Herald of Secret Streams. Uh, I did, it was balanced. I went with the mana curve. Uh, the only guy playing a lot of control I really lucked out, he had Rune Snag and something else for control in his deck. And I managed to extirpate both of them. And then he's he couldn't do anything. Uh, I just walked over top of him. Uh, was the guy is one of the guys around actually that, around here that plays well, so I felt great that I actually won a Sanguine Sacrament gaining twice X life from the bottom. Boy, and a blinding fog. You guys play regular fog. Yeah. Had a few other weird things during uh Scars Block going back a few years. Notice that the uh, no one in the group was drafting any of the blue, like any. And for those of you that remember Scar's block, uh, had a lot of kind of eh, tier hostage taker. You can take that somewhere else. Had a lot of really meh tier blue in it. Like you'd splash some of the spells, and no one drafted any creatures. So on an absolute lark. I drafted all the blue creatures I could, some of the blue control, and every last equipment I could get my hands on. So it would be uh, second turn. There's a two cast, the two blue, one four, which is really big, fat backhand, but you can't attack with it. Until you throw on something like, I think it's a copper carapace, because it's plus two, plus two, and can't block. The equipment costs one and equips for one or two. So now you've got a, you've got a, Three six, and something else on it. It's, like, it's too fat to burn, and the creature on its own is such a disappointing pile of junk. You don't want to waste a spell on it to kill it. <laughs> I want to vote with this stupid idea. I think I want to. Uh, I came in not first. I didn't win any. I'm fairly certain I didn't win any. I came in somewhere between second, third, fourth. 
pretty consistently for a little while because it was no one else drafted any of those cards. Uh, Rampaging. That's Rossadon. He's not bad. No one drafted any of this junk. So I had the, the pick of all the best cards of those colors, which worked great until one of my friends decided he would steal the idea while I was at the table. We both came in bottom of the heap. The deck, you, you can only do it if you're the only guy drafting that. And I have had not a lot of success beyond that. I may have, I don't think, I think I may have maybe come in top once or twice. Uh, repeating Barrage. Bay 3, it's, oh, it's a sorcery, that's right. Pay 5 to put it back in your graveyard from hand only if you attacked. That's no hammer to Bogardan. I know Hammer of Bogardin, and you're no Hammer of Bogardin. Oh. Uh, at the pre-release for this last week, came in second? Yeah, second. Which is actually phenomenal for me. Uh, there, root down Craig. I have a mountain of you things from frickin' M13 yet. Uh, tried. Tried to run... Green, blue, merfolk. And that idea flopped miserably. So I tried. Ah, oh, sweet. It's the compass that turns into a maze. I like him. Play Grixis Pirates. And oh my gosh. The synergy, ladies and gentlemen. The synergy. Oh wow. It's, this would fire and that would go off. And this would do a thing with that other card. And this would. But da da! And that was fun. I haven't had fun at a draft like that. Just all this stuff would happen. It was great. Uh, Butcher of Magan. Oh, this guy. I think I might have got him in one of my win packs, but he's still pretty cool. The whole, uh, it pays seven life, blow something up. You might be a commander someday. Ah, uh, no, you're not. You're not, because Markov from the commander boxes is still more interesting than you, and it's in a third color. You'll be something. Don't worry about it. Yep. Texas Pirates had so much fun. Uh, second one, my pool was so bad. I told you how bad it was. It was that damn bad. Priest of the Awakening Sun. Uh, Might have been about that bad. Nope. Beyond that, down just about down to the end of this box here. Sword point. Actually, that's the second one of those I got. That's a neat card. I like this. This is it's a theme, right? The pirate theme. You pull out three cards, and then they got it. They can pay three life per one they want you to get rid of. It's a risky move, but I think it's one of the most nicest theme cards in this set. Oh, oh played an awful lot of casual. I've got. Uh, I I would swing my camera around, but it would fall off the stand it's on. Yeah, I got a ton of crap. Uh, so much stuff. And the problem is, I'll buy this stuff, and it's going to take me a month to sort it, because I'm that lazy. Daring Saboteur can't be blocked. Deals damage to a player. Just, uh, one toughness. Okay, you're a one. A two casting, that's two, one. You loot. Foil, Dire Fleet Captain. These guys, I have, I have an, uh, what's his name? The orc from Cons, and not the crappy one. Uh, Zergo Helm Smasher, I have an orc commander deck, because I also play 40k, and guess who I play? <laughs> and I was so happy. This set's got a few more orcs in it. I'm still trying to get the uh, the mythic one. The one that knocks out a third of everyone's life total? I like him a lot. Carnage Tyrants. Can't be countered. Hexproof. Six casting. Seven six. You are an amazing card, my friend. I don't know if I'm going to keep you or trade you. I might keep you just because you're freaking awesome. That's a beautiful card. I love that. It's a great card. And last pack in the box. A spell swindle. Counter target spell, great X treasure tokens. I don't play counter spells. 
I play casual and I don't play counter spells because the guy who at the table, you're playing five or six people. The guy playing counter spells, he's like, it, a word I'm not going to use because this isn't one of my drunken rambling videos. You know who you are, buddy. You know you, the guy that plays. So I'm going to to point this. You. You. The guy that plays counter spells in a multiplayer game. You are this close from not being invited back. You know who you are. <sighs> Unwrap the pack and forgot about it. And Braska's Contempt. Exile a creature or planeswalker gain two life. Ah, oh, that four mana though. It's a bit much. So there's one that does this for there's one that does this for three, isn't there, but doesn't have the life gain? It's from Theros. Is it from Theros? I forget which one it's from. Anyway, that's the end of that box. Uh you know what? I'm gonna tear all this crap open. And then I'll come back because. That's about all the story I have right now. <laughs> we'll see if my luck improves. Be back in a couple of minutes. For final tally, um, I think I'm not totally sold on the foils I got, but here's the thing: foils. Uh, I like to get high value foils so I can trade for other cards. Uh, there's not a lot of times when a foil really catches my eye. I guess it's got to be something absolutely beautiful. Because I'm going to put in a commander deck or something. Uh, but beyond that, I, frankly, I would rather got an actual Shaper Sanctuary. I didn't. But we didn't get a lot of things. I didn't get didn't get that Black Mythic Orc Pirate that knocks everyone's life total by a down by a third. That was one of the ones I really, really wanted. But I'm, I'm sure someone I know got one. I can trade for it. I'm a pile of these freaking... Common as water, rare lands. 
Like, really, wizards? Do we need these every every couple of years? I, uh, that's so many of these. The things I'm damn happy about is I got what, two treasure maps, two primal amulets, dowsing daggers. I got the one thematic compass, fortunately. I'll have to settle for that and my promo one from the first event. A couple of galleons. And I'm I like these. I like these so much. These are cards. I'm not entirely sure of the competitive value of them, but the casual value of them. Right? So that's guys, makes treasures, you can sack treasures to draw cards. There's so much stuff in here, that's an <clears throat> Primal amulets make your spells go even better. So for that weird red blue commander deck full of stuff, uh, dowsing dagger turns into way more mana. Uh, thematic compass definitely for a commander deck. Dig out a few lands, flip it over, and it turns into a maze. And the conqueror's galleon. I like this as. This has a lot of fun flavor in this set. These guys get there, and the first thing they do, set up shop. We need a trading post right here. It's pretty cool. Got a pair. Some of them. I'm not... Mm, I don't know how to tell you this. Jace needs to not be around for a while. Uh, as far as the story of this game goes, this guy here... Can you send him somewhere for three or four years? Absence makes the heart grow fonder, and I think if he never comes back, I'll start to like him better as a character. Black. Blood Priest Paladin. I think I cut up a couple of them. Yep. It's the one Arguel's blood part. Uh, I like the Fathom Fleet Captain. Could stand to not be a one toughness, though. I do... I do like this guy really is... Cabal Ghoul, right? It doesn't fly, which the ghoul does, I think. I don't know if I don't have one. But he cares about what died this turn. Not like while he's in play, this turn. Oh, there's all this stuff out. Board wipe. Paladin. <laughs> Pile of counters. Ah. Uh, like, and with the colors the vampires are in, it'd be like, oh, it's end of your turn? Okay, route and paladin. Uh, pay five, blam, power, uh, blam. <laughs> That's great. We got two search for Ascada. Uh, I like these guys. In the first event, the one where I did good, I had a Thaumatic Compass. I had both of these. I finished one game with about five cards left in my deck. I wasn't even sure I was going to win. I pulled everything of interest out of there just to get to that point. Still managed to win. Rest of the blue cards. Uh, that's kind of... River's Rebuke is kind of an evacuate. Kind of. Got a real arcane adaptation. Uh, this Kopala Warden of Waves. I had him in the first try. I don't know if I like you or not. Not really sure. Uh, if this was an instant, I might like it. Pay X. Your sorcery. Two blue and X. Game creature converted mana cost X. If it was an instant, I'd like it. Another Kapala. Yay, overflowing insight. The card that's so expensive that I couldn't even play it in limited. Three! Three! Three of the new cradle! Ah, uh, I think I think the biggest draw for a bunch of these weird cards, all these guys that flip in the lands, because they just scream! Hey, you're playing a commander deck with creatures? Play me! Ah, uh, and that the blue one, this guy here. You're playing a commander deck with blue? Play me! And all of these! Yeah, play a bunch of me in your deck, because I turn into land later on. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Dual Carnage Tyrants. Hello, Crawworm? 2017 called. You're unemployed. <laughs> a lot of neat green cards in this one. Uh, 
Yay. Not. It's the whole third spell in a turn thing, and it costs four. So if you're playing, you're playing the standard kind of red deck, she's turn one spell, turn two spell, turn three spell, turn four that, and you're spent. You're done. You can potentially cast two cards because you have drawn a spell, and this will kick one off. And then the third one. So unless you've got something like, was it the uh, the not, the the not really, hammer of Bogarden, or yeah, standard as you got. I could name five things with buyback that would be great. Pow pow pow, poof. So it's three for yeah. It's gonna be a hard one to do. I think given the option, I would probably rather play. Rather pay three for a. Uh, oh crap! Now I'm drawing a blank. Three the three mana, three red enchantment. You can discard a land to draw two. Uh, discard a land to do two damage to someone. I forget what it's called. I like to turn all my mountains in this, into shocks. One star of extinction. One board wipe. I'll admit, the theme. Oh, the flavor. What killed the dinosaurs? Blam, that. What what killed them? What kill you? Arrgh, please, go away. Die. Never come back. Do not pass go. Bunch of weird cards. This Captain Lannery Storm. I don't know how to tell you this. Like, If they made her a mythic and she was better, I would say yes. It's a tough one. And I think I've got one. Yeah, I got one Legion's Landing. Blur, blur, blur. Which Ashes of the Abhorrent. Settle the Wreckage. God, I got a bunch of Ashes of the Abhorrent. That card, I think in the second. The second event. Some dude had that out. And I wasn't worried about it. I, and I wound up discarding. What was it? First, second, whatever. I ditched the uh, the uncommon unless you get rid of a flyer or an enchantment, and I let that just sit there, sat there, sat there, and then when it came time to do something, there was you know I attacked and it was a mass casualty event, and by the time I was done, he had twice as much life as I'd started with. It's sucking the wind out of your sails. Ugh. only one legion's landing. That's unfortunate. That's really, yeah. But. Oh, no, I got a bunch of stuff I wanted. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff that, once I figure out what it's worth, probably trade to people I know that really like uh, cards for competitive, and I will get more fun cards for non competitive. <laughs> if you're not playing for fun, you're playing a game wrong. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys later.